I basically sent out more than a thousand applications in a week and I didn't hear anything back. And I can also share with you that I failed uh, one marketing data science interview so hard that basically me and the interviewer basically sit there and uh, being silent for over 20 minutes. Today, I'm talking to my friend Byron, who has landed his first full-time data science job right after grad school in the middle of the pandemic. He's here to share with you exactly what he did and how he did it. So Byron, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. So Byron, let's just jump right into it. Why don't you share with the audience your story in terms of you know, your background and where you were at when you were looking for your first job? Sure, so I graduated in 2019 from a data science master in the Bay Area. And I worked as a school RA and a contractor position before getting this full-time job. So technically speaking, this is not my first job, but my knowledge and my reflection in the application process are still applicable to many new grads. Plus people with less than two years of experience don't have much noticeable advantage in the market. So we are on the same level. Thanks for sharing. So let's talk more, Byron, about what was going on in your job search process. What are the biggest takeaways? Yes, there are many takeaways at different application stage I'd like to share with you, especially after making many of the mistakes myself. The biggest one I would say is always, always, and always ask for contacts. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is you know, if there's one takeaway I'd like you to take after watching this video, it's always ask for contacts. It doesn't matter if you are talking to a recruiter in a data challenge stage, or even more importantly, during the onsite, you should always ask for the contacts before you answer the questions. Got it. So basically, this tip applies in multiple stages in the job search process. Um, so maybe let's talk about, you know, each step in the process one by one. And uh, the first step would be to get interviews. And many people, especially people, you know, you mentioned like who have less than two years of experience or who just fresh out of school, find it very difficult to get interview opportunities. What, what did you do to get interviews? Like, could you share some tips with us on that? Sure, I had the same uh, problem before. So my, my solution that I'm suggesting is that the first, you should always focus on one type of position and tailor your resume by different topics for this position. For instance, you should find your interest early on. And some people don't get interviews because they have incorrect understanding of the positions. So after you understand the position and the job description for different topics, you should tailor your resume to fit those uh, descriptions. That's very helpful. So how did you find the position you wanted to focus on? So basically, I applied for all type of positions with data science title and data analyst title as well. So when you read the job description, you can find that there are different industries. So for one, there are mobile app industry like Facebook, uh, Poshmark, basically different apps that you use on your phone. Secondly, there are positions that are targeted for marketing data scientists. Some models you would use is like uh, multi-attribute, multi-touch attribution and market mix modeling. And they would technically, they would actually mention those keywords in the job description and you would know this is a marketing specific job. And thirdly, uh, they will probably mention more machine learning requirement, time series requirement, and then you can tailor your resume and your project to the specific positions. Awesome. So uh, basically, we can get the uh, exact category or position, exact type of position from the job description. Um, so if we, you know, go back to the question, what are the other tips you want to share with us? So basically, if an another thing I think you should do is uh, be brave and be thoughtful about asking for referral from unknown people on LinkedIn. Uh, for instance, what I did is I always prepare my resume, a paragraph about myself, and also a cover letter for this specific position. After you have these three things, you can write a very short paragraph to the people at the, uh, the company you're interested in and send them a, a short note. If you didn't hear anything back from the application that you submitted, understand it's very much not your fault and you should go ahead and move on to the next stage. Yeah, I completely agree. So do you mind sharing a little bit of the uh, statistics, like how many you know job applications you send out and how many interviews you get? 
Sure, I, I submitted more than a thousand uh, applications. I didn't keep a track of all the ones that applied. I only tracked off uh, those ones that are replied. So at mm -hmm. the end, I had uh, heard back uh, about 20 ish. There were three companies very interested in my experience and after I talked to them. So at the end, I had on site and uh, picked one of them. Probably about mm -hmm. that, yes. Wow, that's uh, lots of effort uh, going to job application. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so when you apply for those jobs and you got like a 20-ish uh, interviews, right? What happened next? Did you get any uh, data challenge or online assessment after you talk with a recruiter? What was your, uh, like in general, what was your interview experience? So before you work on the data challenge problem, I would suggest you to ask the recruiter or the person who sent you the data challenge, is this for a technical person or a business person? And what are they expected for the deliverable? Are they looking for actionable insight or analysis? The, the biggest mistakes I can tell you is that I there are two very good uh, mobile app company that are very interested in that. Um, I, I basically delivered the wrong PPT to them. So one of them is actually asking for uh, business uh, actionable insights where I submitted more detailed that Jupyter notebook and analysis. And the other one is actually looking for more detailed analysis, but I actually submit uh, the actionable insight and they, they both reject me, even though I know the problems are not very hard and uh, I'm very interested in the company. So at the end, now I always keep a knowledge book of my own mistakes and key points that I learned from this. I would highly recommend you keep one as well. So at the end, uh, I would suggest that if you have time, you can take more classes online because you know not every school teach everything you need for, for the jobs. Uh, but of, of course, you should always learn to balance your ROI. Awesome. So to summarize, basically, there are three tips. The first one is to know the audience of your report or slides, right? So in order to yes. do that, we want to confirm with the recruiter that who will be the audience reading your uh, reading your analysis. And the second one is it's uh, it will be helpful to keep a like a notebook or knowledge book to basically uh, jot down all your mistakes and then you, how you can learn from them to improve yourself. And the last tip is you mentioned is taking more courses, taking more online courses to help you build up your knowledge, right? That is a very interesting point because you have a relevant master degree in data science and which means you have done all the training that's needed to do, uh, to do the job. Why did you invest more time and energy in learning actual knowledge? Sure, so, so what I feel is uh, firstly, school teaches about knowledge, but not necessarily about problem solving. Secondly, is that data science has evolved so much in the t in the today's uh, scope that it's very hard for a school to teach you in different scenario. For example, like in my school, they barely teach anything about marketing technology, even though the model and the business inside are not very hard. So I, I suppose they probably would teach this specific knowledge in marketing, but my school didn't provide it. This gap is especially big for non-engineering data scientists. If you interview more and more and you will feel it. So, so like the data science interview typically would ask me how to go about and solve a problem. And it, actually the approach and the way you present your approach are more important than the solution. So watching videos, like, uh, definitely watching Amazon videos and watching, reading a lot of the posts online and uh, taking some classes like marketing classes. These help me to gather more information in the real life example and help me better prepare me for the, the problems I would uh, face in the interview. That's awesome. I, I totally agree with, you know, investing in yourself. You know, it will not only help you get job offers, but also for selling in the job. So yeah, thank you for sharing the, all these tips. So after you are done with, you know, learning more knowledge and uh, preparing for the interview, you go on to interviews, right? You will be interviewing with different data scientists and hiring managers. Could you share some tips with us on interviewing? What do you think that we should do and should not do during interviews? So I would suggest that before you go to the onsite interview, so firstly, you should definitely research the interviewer and see their LinkedIn profiles. Perhaps they'll put some details on what problem they are trying, they are solving at the moment and what models they are doing. Secondly, you can research their data blog and see what this interviewer has done before and uh, what other teams are working on it at the moment. If none of these are applicable, I would recommend you to research the product, brainstorm some ideas, uh, how to improve it, and how do you, how would you evaluate the incremental value of uh, when adding the features and the 
making the changes. Yeah, that's that's my first suggestion. Secondly, before the onsite, I would suggest you to prepare the frameworks for product sense questions. So one thing I, I found very helpful is by watching Emma's video, um, and the, her frameworks are very helpful for me to preparing uh, the incoming questions. And thirdly, you can prepare the behavior questions. So one very helpful uh, material is, is that you can Google something called uh, Amazon's 16 rules. Amazon's famous for uh, interview a lot of the behavior questions and uh, they have a, some certain framework but I found very helpful for when you prepare for these questions. Thank you so much for sharing all these uh, awesome tips. Um, I think this definitely will be helpful for the job seekers right now. Um, so is there anything else you would say, any advice you would give for someone, you know, who's just feeling low confidence, who's struggling with their job search, what would you say to help them move forward? Sure, sure. So firstly, I would definitely suggest that uh, be brave. So I can tell you a little bit more, more about myself. So at the early application stage, I basically sent out more than a thousand applications in a week, and I didn't hear anything back. And, and that's when the point I start to reflect on myself. And I can also share with you that I failed uh, one marketing data science interview so hard that basically me and the interviewer basically sit there and uh, being silent for over 20 minutes. And that's the point, you know, when I, when I start to Google online classes about marketing and start to improve them about myself. So it's, you know, it's always, it's not a big problem when you make mistakes. It's, uh, it's probably more important uh, to, to improve after you make mistakes. And secondly, I definitely recommend that you should have faith in yourself. A job application is very much a, a number game. The more you apply it for, the, the more chances you will hear something back. And a lot of things are out of your control, whether the application you send, or perhaps they already have someone in the final interview process. Probably they are just testing the water and see how many respondents they will, they will get. And, uh, you know, the, the bar, the range of the, uh, the people who, who submit application have. So a lot of time it's out of your control and uh, it's, it's not your fault for not getting some interviews. Amazing. I, I think that we'll have lots of people who are in the job search process and are, and are not feeling great right now due to the pandemic. But hopefully after this, then we'll have some inspiration and then we'll be able to have some takeaways from you, Byron. So thank you so much for sharing your story with all of us today. It was a great honor to have you on this video. Thanks for having me. I learned a lot from your video too, and I wish the best of luck to everyone who's applying for jobs too.